Um, I want to talk to you guys about um, some important notation for um, for derivatives. And um, so we have different ways of writing derivatives. So for example, um, if I write, so let's say you have a function. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, f of x. Um, then the um, derivative, derivative is um, going to equal to uh, f prime of x. Okay, so that's the first way that we but then we also have um, another way of writing it, and that's called uh, Leibniz notation. And Leibniz notation is um, very useful in a lot of different ways. So um, let me uh, just kind of go through that real quick. Um, we have, so instead of um, writing f of x as f of x, I'm gonna also write it as y. And so, um, you know, so here you plug in an x value and you get a, a y value. It doesn't have to be y, but that's just what it is for this example. Now, the uh, derivative, another way of writing the derivative is, this is Leibniz notation, dy over dx. Now what this means is, the way to read this is this is the uh, derivative derivative of y and then this tells you with respect to what quantity you're getting the derivative of so that's one of the advantages so here what it's saying is that x is the independent variable and so this, um, this function, the independent variable is x, and then you know we'll have different situations later. Um, another thing is that even though um, the derivative isn't actually a fraction, remember it's a, a limit of ratios. So here, for example, if you look at this as the slope of the tangent line, this is the you know, rise of the tangent line, and this is the run. And so if you remember when we were explaining it earlier, um, both of these are going towards uh, zero. And so this notation kind of breaks it up into its pieces and that's gonna be useful uh, later. Okay, now another way of using it is um, as an operator. So let me erase this guy real quick. So, Okay, so for example, uh, we already have several operators. We know um, the plus sign is an operator, minus sign, for example, times, divide. These are all uh, operators because, for example, if you have four and then plus two, this operator right here, that's telling you, hey, buddy, add these two numbers for me right now. And you would say, okay, well that equals to six. In the same way, um, you have the derivative operator. Now, so the derivative operator looks like this. It looks like uh, d over dx, and then you have a parentheses. And so here, for example, um, we've got x squared, let's say. And so what this tells you, this is asking you to do something. This is saying, hey, mister, 
why don't you um, get to work and find the uh, derivative of x squared. So that's why it's a um, an operator because it's telling you to do something. And so then you would find the derivative of x squared um, which ends up being uh, 2x. Okay, so uh, we're going to go through some of the basic rules. Now we're not going to prove any of them. We're just going to go over them and uh, the proofs I'm going to do in a separate video. Um, so the first uh, type of function that I want to look at is uh, constant functions. Um, so uh, if I take a look at a uh, function, a constant function, for example, f of x equals to 4, um, if, I, if you try to graph this guy, uh, you should be able to find the derivative relatively easily. So f of x equals to 4 is a horizontal line. And so remember the uh, derivative of uh, this function uh, is the slope of the tangent line. Well, the slope is equal to 0 because it's a horizontal line. So that means that the derivative of this function is equal to 0. And uh, you can generalize this for any constant function then that the, let me put it over here, the derivative of uh, any constant c is going to equal to 0. OK. Now, um, the next rule and um, very useful rule is the, let me erase this, or I'll just I'll just go down a little bit. It's called the uh, power rule. Now the power rule says the derivative of uh, x raised to any power is equal to uh, n times uh, x raised to the n minus 1. OK, now another way of thinking about this guy is this is the hammer rule. The hammer rule, because if you take a hammer and so imagine that uh, you hit this guy with a hammer, bam! This is a sledgehammer, in case you've noticed. This guy comes down in front, and then it's kind of like this guy loses a marble. So uh, that's how you find the derivative of x raised to any power. So let's do an example. Uh, let's say you want to find, um, you've got a function. Let's say you've got four. Sorry. Let's say you've got x to the fourth. Sorry. You want to find the derivative of x raised to the fourth power. All right. So then you go. Oh, I know what to do. I use the power rule. Let me bring down the hammer. Bam. This guy knocks the four down. So the derivative of this guy is equal to 4 and then x raised to the then this guy loses 1 4x to the third and so that's the derivative of, of that guy easy huh alright let's do another one let's say for example um, you want to find the derivative of um, square root of x. You go, well, wait, you can't do the power rule, the hammer rule for that. Aha, but you remember 
this guy, square root, well, you can write that as a fractional exponent. This is equal to the derivative of uh, x raised to the 1 half. So then you go, oh, bring down the hammer. Bring down the hammer. So this guy comes down. This is equal to 1 half x to the, now if you subtract, one from uh, one half, you get x to the negative one half, negative one half, which is simply equal to one over two times x to the positive one half, because you move it down, you know, to make it positive, which is then equal to one over two square root of x. And that's it. Now this one, this is a good one to uh, memorize, that the derivative of uh, square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. So it's good to be able to go straight from here to here, because this one pops up so often.